Um, and lastly, bringing us back up to the global level, um, the Financial Post has quoted that uh, one third of urban dwellers, approximately one billion people, live in slums. The United Nations predicts that number will double in the next 25 years. What are the implications of two billion homeless? Yeah, the implications are quite severe. I'll give you another statistic. We have um, something like three billion people today. It's about half the world's population in, in urban areas. Uh, by 2030, um, there'll be five billion, it's about 60%. Uh, what is disturbing about the phenomenon of urbanization is that um, the cities that are, you know, taking in uh, these people have not planned uh, for more and more people coming in. So actually what you see around the world are, uh, is, a, is a kind of global um, urban apartheid taking place where more and more the rich and the poor are being separated. Uh, people are living in, in different neighborhoods, there's more ghettoization, there's more segregation. Uh, and, and what I find very disturbing traveling around the world is that this is being accompanied by an increase in social control policies. So you have many more anti-vagrancy policies. There's actually a criminalization of the poor and the homeless, as has happened here in Vancouver. Um, and and so, so the urbanization is being accompanied by more and more dispossession, more and more you know, issues being made into security issues, and, and there isn't um, either a global or a national thinking of let's build inclusive cities, let's build cities where people can live together. And I find this very short-sighted because it's actually the workers and the poor who sustain cities. Um, I mean, my city where I live in Delhi would collapse if the poor were not there. Right? And, 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 and similarly, in, in developed countries, you have a lot of uh, working people, you have immigrants, you have you know, um, minorities. Um, so, so I think it's uh, what we are faced with is a, is a very, very bleak scenario, unless there is a quick turnaround and governments recognize urbanization actually as an opportunity to create inclusive cities. Otherwise, what we are going to see, and this is something that is quite predictable, is we are going to see more social conflict in the future. We are going to see more social conflict, uh, not because of you know political or ethnic or other reasons, but because there is this this phenomenon of separating the rich and the poor, and and there's more. You can see that around the world there are more gated communities. People are you know living in areas which, where there is complete security, and it has created. Uh, and this is something I find very disturbing. It has created a us versus them sort of phenomenon where people who live in gated communities or in secure areas feel that we are different from the others and, and the others are the problem. Uh, and I think that whole um, mindset that is growing is just going to feed into more you know, security policies, more anti-vagrancy policies, more criminalization of the poor and, and the whole um, global environment where there is this, you know, there are these efforts to counter terrorism and so on. Uh, it's all going to feed into a situation where governments are going to respond with law and order rather than responding with social justice measures. On the uh, road to um, Habitat 2010, mm -hmm. uh, coming up in Rio next year, right. what, is, what are the major policy issues that we need to be focusing on to solve some of these issues, including the increase in, in homelessness? Well, I think the, the World Urban Forum, which will take place in, in Rio in March uh, 2010, uh, is an opportunity uh, to look at what is happening, what we've, what we've just been discussing, and, to, and for governments and for the international community to come together and say that we really need to change track. And, and I think one of the ways that, that that will be done and can be done is to adopt a human rights approach, is to say that the city belongs to everybody. There is a right to the city. The right to the city means everyone has a right to the civic services that the city offers. Everyone has a right to the resources that are available. And I think unless and, and I think there has to be a very serious reflection on the primacy that has been given to the market yeah. and the primacy that has been given to uh, to property, the primacy that has been given to uh, you know making very important social goods like housing into commodities. And I think if there is that type of rethinking, and if there is a rethinking that the way to solve urbanization problems is not to remove remove the slums, but actually to upgrade them, actually to involve people, to have 
more participation of the people that are in the city in the planning process. I think if there is that type of rethinking, but, but I'm not very optimistic for Rio because I think that the global um, thrust, and we can see that in the types of measures governments are taking to overcome the global economic crisis. I mean, those measures are still very neoliberal. They're still, you know, bailing out the banks. They're not bailing out the people who are, who have been dispossessed, who have lost their jobs or lost their homes. Um, so I, I think that there is a, uh, there is a trap that governments have gotten into by um, effectively selling their souls to the, to the neoliberal approach. And, and it's no different uh, here in Canada. And I, and I think that uh, this is where the civil society plays a very important role, both at the local, national and the international level. And very active participation of civil society in global events, as happened in Habitat 2 in Istanbul, as will happen next year in Rio, is perhaps the answer, because civil society has been um, proposing alternatives. There have been you know, many blueprints, and the whole idea of the right to the city has come essentially from civil society movements and campaigns. Uh, and I think, uh, and, and the other um, dimension that I have continuously stressed in my UN work and subsequent to that is not to forget the people in the rural areas. I mean, there are still parts of the world where the majority are in the rural areas. And, and I'm actually a very um, sort of strong uh, critic of this, this policy that also often comes from the United Nations, which says that, you know, um, cities are engines of rural development. I, I don't believe in that. I think rural areas have their own, um, you know, have their own sustainability and have their own resource base. And, and one of the ways to, to, not necessarily to stop, but to, you know, reduce urbanization is to make sure that rural livelihoods, including the livelihoods of, of farmers, of peasants, uh, are viable livelihoods, um, and that we create uh, economic economically sustainable and culturally sustainable communities in the rural areas. You'll be returning back to Delhi in a few days. Um, what will you be working on when you return home? Well, I'm working on uh, a number of issues in India. In fact, we have, a, we have the Commonwealth Games coming up in 2010 as well, yeah. and, and we are facing um, similar problems. There's uh, more and more policies in New Delhi, um, that are, um, you know, against the homeless, against the beggars. They want to remove uh, people from the street before all our international guests come. Yeah. Uh, and there are very severe measures being taken. So that's one of the areas that uh, my organization, Housing and Land Rights Network, is, is working on. Uh, I'm also doing more research on, um, uh, on social control and the city, looking at the types of, you know, policies that are being put into place around the world and what needs to be done to challenge them. Uh, and I'm working more on the on this notion of the right to the city because I, I very strongly believe that it is something that can bring different sectors together and it can become an organizing principle for mobile social the kind of social mobilization that's necessary to confront the many many problems that we face and i'll continue to travel and speak conferences and universities well thank you so much for spending the time with us today we really appreciate it and we look forward to the Richard Splain lecture tomorrow at uh, night at the Lewis Institute for Global Issues. Thank you again and safe travels. Thanks very much.